Now I haven't tied a fly just out of a pheasant skin in a while, so I think I'm gonna do that today. Stick around. Hello everybody, welcome to Savage Flies. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. That was, uh, well, I'd have a pause, break, start over. Hello everybody, welcome to Savage Flies. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So the pattern I'm talking about today is a really old pattern. It's not a forgotten fly at all, but it's a very old pattern. It's called the Carey Special. Now it was created by a Colonel Carey who was a British soldier who came to British Columbia in 1925. He probably came up with a fly in the 30s. Roderick Haig Brown, one of the forefathers of Canadian fly tying, really helped to make the fly popular in his 1939 classic book, Western Angler. So it's been an effective fly, a very popular fly for almost 100 years now. And you might see several videos of this guy being tied out there, but you're not gonna see very many of them tied in the original dressing like the Colonel did. You'll see some tied with a chenille body, maybe a rabbit dubbing body, then probably a wire rib. But the Colonel used pheasant tail fibers for the body and then just a thread for the rib. Now, regardless of whatever body you choose, I would say the most distinguishing characteristic of a carry special is the really long collar hackle. Now, it almost looks like a hair wing streamer, but it's not. It's a, a feather wrapped as a collar hackle. It's just really long, which is just one more use for the rump feathers on this pheasant skin. Now, it's a really cool pattern. It's been effective for almost 100 years. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, the carry special. Now this is the original version as Colonel Carey created it in the 1930s. I'm tying this on a size eight. Let's go ahead and bend this barb in right there. So it's a size eight wet fly hook, one extra long, and it may be a one extra strong. I'm not looking at the package right now, but it does look a little bit thick. So black thread, 70 denier or 140, whatever you want, but go ahead and put a base down to the start of the bend. Now the original calls for a thread, thread rib, and I'm gonna double this over, create a small little dubbing loop right here, and that's gonna be my rib. So I've got two strands of thread, and I'll just park this to the side with my magnet, and get ready to tie in the tail. Just one more use from the this golden pheasant skin, this big rump feather right here. I like the ones with the brown on it. And I'll go ahead and strip a little bit off this right here. Give me some bare stem showing. And I'm gonna catch the whole tail in. So just pull it down tight. And it's a pretty long tail because we've got a super long um, hackle, collar hackle. So let's do a little wrap right here and just catch this in to where we're gonna start our body here in just a minute. That looks fine right there. I'm gonna put some loose wraps over here to just kind of thicken up my underbody. Leave that in right there, that's fine. Now let's take our thread back to where we're gonna catch in our body. So if you've seen many of these tied on YouTube, you'll see folks using chenille or even rabbit, but that wasn't what the original used. The original was pheasant tail fibers, these guys right here. And as an alternate, uh, the Colonel said use deer hair, which is a little bit more of an advanced technique, I would say, because if you're gonna wrap the deer hair body, it's, it's a little tricky and you probably get halfway up and have to tie a new piece in and unless you're really good or really lucky, you're gonna end up with a lump in the middle of your fly. So we're gonna use this pheasant tail fiber. And these are kind of hard to wrap with your fingers because you'd be grabbing the very tip. So I'm going to grab it with the spring-loaded hackle pliers as close to the end as I can. And you can kind of spin them if you want right here, sort of like that. But I wouldn't spin them too much because you want it to be a pretty fat uh, layer. You want your swath here to be about as fat as you can get it. That way it'll take fewer wraps to get up the top uh, because we don't have a whole lot of wraps to work with. We're probably gonna be running out of these fibers when we get 
up here to where we want to, to finish off the, the fly. So I don't know if I can get another full wrap right there, but I think we're going to be fine. I'm going to go ahead and catch that in, release that. And yeah, it looks like we've got a long enough body, so we're in, we're in good shape here. Let's go ahead and snip these guys off. Now one more step before we tie in the, the collar hackle. Just counter wrap this thread rib we left hanging off. And you don't have to put these too close together. I don't want them spread out like that, so I'm gonna just give it a little spin, just kind of lump them together. And the one in Roderick Haig Brown's book here has some pretty wide wraps right here. And I think it's really just for durability. So this is how they did it in the 1930s. I would say there's nothing wrong with using a wire rib right here, a gold or even silver, I think would look pretty good. They probably didn't do that back then because it just wouldn't have been as common. But there we go, we've got it ribbed. Now we're ready for the hackle. And this part is what makes the carry special, the carry special. Just one of these rump feathers from the golden pheasant. It's got a little bit of that metallic looking sheen on it. And this is really what makes the fly cool. So I'm going to tie it in with the tip. And these feathers are a little bit delicate, so be careful with them. Create a tie-in point like that right there, but uh, don't worry if you break a couple of these fibers, you might do that, but just be careful and, and you should be fine. So I'm gonna fold that back over, get a couple wraps right here, take my thread up close to the eye, I'm gonna snip off this tip right here, just the tip. Okay, now how many wraps do we want to do here? Well, I think as many as you can. Um, maybe four. It's a big, a big fly with some really long hackle fibers right here. And that's the, you know, the defining characteristic of this fly. It almost looks like a hair wing streamer, but it's not. It's just some long uh, rump feathers and I got that one spun around I don't really want it there we go let's do it like this so they'll they'll preen back maybe just a little bit neater we'll be able to get them all back when we're tying our head now that's probably enough let's let's take this one halfway around again and catch it off on the underside right here and it's a buggy mess like a lot of flies, right before that final step, they can really look crazy. But in about 30 seconds, this thing's gonna look pretty cool. So go ahead and preen these back right here. And let's get this, build this head up. Several wraps, not real tight right here, but we wanna get these fibers laying back and a major swept back look right here. We've got a little bit of mess right there. I should have probably trimmed, but I might be able to bury them in the head. And as we do with big streamer-like wet flies, don't worry if your head's pretty big. I'm going to lick my fingers and try to pull these back. I've got some of them um, going all over the place, but I think that's it right there. That's the profile we want. Let's go ahead and whip finish it. Now a drop of head cement or UV resin, and this guy's done. The original Carey Special as tied by Colonel Carey himself. So that's it everybody, I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.